Hello and welcome to Kaplan Swayzer's video presentation of what every candidate should know. This is a video presentation about the level two CAIA exam. My name is Greg Philbeck. I hold an endowed professorship in the Penn State University system and have done so since 2006. Previous to my tenure here at Penn State, I served as senior vice president for Kaplan Swayzer and I am your instructor for the Level 2 online weekly program, which we'll be discussing a little bit later on as a part of this video presentation. This video presentation is designed to talk to you about the structure of the Level 2 CAIA exam and also how Kaplan Swayzer can partner with you to ensure a greater possibility for success as you pursue the Level 2 exam. So let's begin by talking a little bit about the CAIA program. Now, obviously, I don't have to sell you on the CAIA program because you've already successfully completed level one of the uh, CAIA program, and now you're ready to move on to that final destination, the ability to pass the level two exam. Still, let's back up for just a moment and remind ourselves why we're in this program. Obviously, as you look at the CAIA curriculum, you'll note some very interesting and relevant articles that are very much in line with what we need to know in the alternative investments industry. And you're looking at a designation since its inception in 2003 has grown at a rate of approximately 34% on a compounded annual basis over time. Right now, if we look at global membership, that global membership is in the neighborhood of 7,000 individuals. And it continues to spread in its membership and those that are interested in the CAIA program. You'll notice that in addition to what you would expect with respect to alternative investment firms, we see professional associations and academic institutions also interested in pursuing the CAIA designation. And the membership, is extending beyond just what we've seen from the alternative investments world as more and more traditional portfolios are recognizing the opportunity set that exists with alternative investments to be able to create greater diversification and enhance risk adjusted performance through the inclusion of alternative investments. Also, the curriculum itself is very relevant and up to date each year the CAIA Association goes through and updates the curriculum at each level. And with that, making sure and ensuring that you're looking at the latest and most important information that's out there for alternative investment managers. So you have a mix of classic topic readings that are going to be relevant across time, as well as some of the cutting edge material that is necessary for you to stay on top of the industry. As you look at the candidate growth associated with the CAIA program, you can see the effects of that compounding over time. Since its inception with the first set of exams given back in 2003, the CAIA program has continued to grow as you look at the two levels of the exam and overall candidate enrollment over time. So once again, you are taking an exam, a series of exams, two exams in this case, that are going to be widely recognized due to the sheer numbers of individuals that are pursuing and have been successful over time in the CAIA program. Let's talk a little bit about the structure of the Level 2 CAIA exam. So you're going to see something familiar and something not so familiar as you move into Level 2. Just like the level one exam, you will have a multiple choice section and we'll go through the specifics associated with it in just a moment. And that multiple choice section will encompass a, a set of topics uh, across a, uh, a wide variety of different areas that is relevant to the alternative investment world. You'll notice with the exception of professional standards and ethics, you will see a total of six broad topic areas that will be tested on the level two exam. Now, just like level one, these topics have differential weightings. So you will note, for example, the relative more importance on the exam in the areas of private equity, of real assets and hedge funds, as they will make up 10 to 20% 
and that's in comparison to the other topic areas that are 5 to 10 percent. Now notice that the ethics material is not tested in the multiple choice section. What is different about level two is that the fact you also have a constructed response section as well, or essay questions. And as you look at the weightings associated with the constructed response, it immediately becomes evident that one of your essay questions that you're going to have in that section is going to be on the subject of ethics. In fact, there will be a total of three essay questions that will be on the exam. And one of those questions will be the professional standards and ethics. The remaining two can come from any of the other areas that are also on the multiple choice section. And you will be looking at two of the different topic areas being represented on that essay section of the exam. So all told, you're looking at 70% of your exam points coming from the multiple choice section and 30% coming from the constructive response or essay questions. Now let's go through and talk a little bit about the structure of the exam. Now, as I mentioned, the first section is two hours or a total of 120 minutes. In that 120 minutes, you have to answer 100 questions just like you did on the level one exam. So if you look at the allocation that takes place for that, you're going to see 120 minutes and 100 questions means that on average, you're looking at 1.2 minutes per question. So you must keep the same pace at level two that you kept at level one in order to complete that exam in the two hour block allocated to you. It also gives you some sense of the types of questions you might expect to see on the exam. In other words, they will be sufficiently rigorous, but they also have to be contained so that on average you can answer these questions in 1.2 minutes. As I mentioned, all of the topic areas that we saw on the previous slide will be tested in the multiple choice section with the exception of ethics and professional standards. Now keep in mind that even though all those topics we will be pursuing in sequential order as a part of our online weekly program, that the actual testing associated with those topics will not necessarily take place in order. After you've taken the first section of the exam, which is two hours in length, you will have an optional 30 minute break before you go to the second section. And that second section is different from what you saw in the second section of level one. The second section, which is also two hours in length, is not multiple choice. It will be constructed response or essay questions. Now, any of the topic areas can be tested in that essay section, but we do know that ethics will be one of the three questions. So you absolutely want to be prepared for the essay question that will be on the subject related to ethics. Now, with three essay questions and 30% of your exam points, you'll see that each of the essay questions is worth 10% of your exam. And each of those questions can have subparts associated with it. So you may have three to five subsections within each essay question. Now, these questions are going to be short answer in nature. In other words, you should be able to answer these questions in one to three paragraphs. And one of the things you want to make sure of is that you answer the question based on the curriculum. And that is a tall order for some level two candidates because you bring a wealth of knowledge and experience from your work environments into studying for the exam and still you are, re are required to respond to those questions based on the curriculum. Not quite such a difficult task with multiple choice questions where you have forced choice answers. You have to pick one of the options that's given to you, and of course, that's going to be based on the curriculum. But when you're answering the essay questions, the essay questions will not bound you. So in other words, they're not going to lead you into a specific direction in responding to the question, and you must respond based on the curriculum. Second, make sure that as you're responding to those questions that you are keeping your answers succinct to the point and related to what the question that's being asked. In other words, you need to make sure that you're not flowering your answers excessively with information that is not worth any points and also that you're answering the question that is being asked, not one that you wish would have been asked or is related to the question that's being asked. So you have to respond to that specific question. 
Now, in preparing for this information for the exam, their uh, old exam questions are not available. In other words, Kaya does not make available old exam questions that have been given in the past. But Kaplan Swayzer has a number of of uh, sample or practice exams that are available to you to help you get ready for this section and you will find some sample questions as well from the CHI Association. Bottom line is particularly for this section you want to make sure you study for that section of the exam. Now as you look at the pass rates associated with the uh, level two exams you'll notice that they have tended to range in the 60 percent area. In other words, what we're looking at is somewhere between 60 and 70 percent in the last four administrations of the level two exam and trending upward here the last two administrations. So about two-thirds of individuals that sat for the level two exam were successful in the last two administrations. So that's an important uh, point for you to understand. One, this is a very doable a framework for you to get through the level two exam, but also not to be overconfident because keep in mind when we say that two thirds of the individuals were successful who took the level two exam, everybody that sat for the level two exam had already been successful on the level one exam. So in other words, you've got individuals that have uh, put the effort in, have done a good job at level one, have now moved on to level two, and two thirds of those on average have been successful over recent administration. Now, how does Kaya go through and determine what will be a passing score? Well, basically, uh, the uh, way in which the passing score is determined is going to be based on 70% of the total points starting as an initial benchmark. So if you get 70% of the points across the two sections combined, you will be successful and pass the level two exam. Now, it is possible that Kaya decides to drop the passing mark down below that 70% uh, uh, mark. But the point is, is that there's no guarantee that will take place. So that means that if you score below 70%, you are running the risk that you will not be successful on the exam. So one way to try to ensure that you're ready for the exam, that you're able to achieve uh, a passing score uh, and, and you will find yourself above 70% is to assess how you're doing on the practice exams offered by Kaplan Swayzer. Now the recommendation is that you should shoot for at least 80% of the exam points through the practice exams in order to make sure you're ready on exam day. That gives you a buffer. That gives you a buffer associated with potential test anxiety associated with the actual exam. It also gives you a bit of a buffer because unless you're very, very strict with yourself as you're taking these practice exams, often candidates have a tendency to peek ahead, look at answers, stop and start the exam and so forth. So you're best served by making sure as you take the practice exams that you're doing it in exam simulated conditions as much as possible. Now, what does it take in terms of your study efforts to be successful on the level two exam? Well, obviously, you need to have a rigorous and well-planned study effort, which means that you're spreading out the content over a number of weeks as opposed to trying to do a quick cram at the end. Well, you guys know this because you were successful at level one. The average study time associated with the level two exam is in excess of 200 hours. So we want to make sure that we are spreading that out over time so that we can absorb the information, process it, integrate it into what we've already mastered so that we will be ready uh, in advance of the exam to be taking some practice exams leading up to the exam to ensure that we're ready. So starting late or studying too little is a recipe for failure and one that you will want to avoid and one that Kaplan Swayzer will work with you to try to ensure that you stay on a schedule. So make sure that you're following suggested study schedules and staying on top of your studies prior to the actual exam. Now, as you look at the offerings associated with Kaplan Swayzer, you can see that the partnership has three components associated with it. There's the preparation that takes place, the practicing, and then the performing 
that will be necessary in order to ensure success. And you can see that the bedrock of any study program will be the Kaplan Swayzer notes. In fact, the online weekly program will provide you with a walking tour of that information with differential examples, different ways of coming at the material, but solidly embedded on the learning objectives that Kaya has set associated with the level two exam. So that partnership in terms of the preparation efforts, making sure you're reviewing your notes and also participating in the online weekly program will lead you from preparing into practice because you have opportunities in each case to be able to have uh, questions at the end of each topic and as a part of the online weekly program to make sure you're mastering the material along the way. Then you also have the opportunity both on a learning objective basis and also across topics and across the curriculum to be able to practice with Swayzer Pro QBank and practice exam questions and also through uh, at, towards the end of your study efforts with an online exam review workshop and solutions. In terms of performance, you will want to also participate in the online mock exam and then obviously to set for the actual exam and uh, wait for victory, wait for the results to come out to show you that your hard work and efforts have paid off. So once again, if you are looking at materials associated with Swayzer, you see a comprehensive cafeteria of options that are available for you. So you would go to the Swayzer website, look at the materials that are available, and then based on those, you would establish a customizable study calendar to help guide you through that materials. So you got to study the material, practice the material, and then as you move towards the last couple of weeks before the exam, as you're taking the practice exams, note the two areas that tend to be the areas where you're most underperforming and ask yourself, as I go back for a high level review of one of these two topic areas, which one will add the most value? Then go through, do a high level review, and then take another practice exam. So that way you're continuously shoring up your weak spots uh, as you get ready for the actual exam. And your review towards the home stretch will be focusing on the key concepts that are part of the Swayzer notes, the flashcards, and also the quick sheet, which provides you an overview of the material as you then break it down from, uh, if you will, from a uh, top to bottom approach in trying to uh, be able to shore up those weak areas. Now, the learning objectives serve as the basis for the questions that you're going to see on the CHI exam, just like you did at level one. So we want to focus on the relevant material for the exam, look at the action words that are given to you as a part of each of the learning objectives. That will tell you if you're supposed to be mastering something on a conceptual basis or more on a quantitative basis. So that will be helpful for you to know, do I need to know how to do a calculation or not? Or am I focusing uh, specifically on a conceptual framework? And each exam question is going to be based explicitly then on one or more of those learning objectives. Now, as you saw in the level one exam, and you'll see even more so on the level two exam, the Kaya program is all about conceptual learning. What we mean by this is you can't go through and memorize a bunch of practice questions and see those same questions repeated to you on the exam. What you have to do is to be able to learn from the material and then to conceptually apply that to other settings so that you are mastering the material uh, again, on a conceptual basis. So any learning objective is going to be fair game. You can't memorize old, uh, you can't memorize questions from the practice exams. You can't memorize uh, just formulas to get the material. You have to learn the material uh, to be able to be ready for the exam. Let me talk to you a little bit about the online weekly class that I will be leading as a part of Kaplan Swayzer's efforts. This weekly class will be taking place uh, over a nine week period. It's going to be a three hour class and you can either joining us, join us live for the class. And if you join us live, you have the ability anytime during that three hour block to be able to submit a question related to what we're talking about for that week's class and to be able to receive feedback uh, as a part of the broadcast. Now that class is archived. So that means that after the, uh, the actual class takes place, you can go back and view it as many times as you want. 
and for the fact that we will have many people that will be in the online weekly class live there will be many times that number that will be watching it on an archive basis in other words if it's not convenient if you have other things going on at the time of the live class you have the ability at any point during the entire time frame in which the Kaya exam cycle is taking place to be able to to view and then review the archives associated with the classes in order to be able to prepare for, for the exam. The only thing you do not have the ability to do is to ask questions as you, as you would be able to do if you were watching the broadcast live. That's the only difference between the live class and the archives associated with the live class. Now, you also have the ability to download the slides uh, and examples prior to the class. So I would strongly encourage you whether you're watching the class live or whether you're watching on an archive basis to download those slides, review them to get a sense of the material that will be covered as a part of the class. So you're gonna read the Swayzer notes, you're gonna scan through the PowerPoint slides to see what's being covered before you actually get into the class itself. Now you will also receive from Kaplan Swayzer a weekly class email which will overview the topic areas that are being covered this week and also a look ahead to what would be coming up the next week. Now, another function that is available for you uh, as a part of the packages that Swayzer offers is the Ask the Instructor link, which means that on a periodic basis, if you have a question and you would like to see that answered, you would be uh, able to submit that question via the online engine of Kaplan Swayzer identifying for the notes, the book number and page number from where your question is emerging, or if it's associated with the online weekly program, the week number and slide number where you're having trouble, and you will get a response associated with it. It's not intended to be uh, a personal tutoring service, but it is a resource that's available for you on a periodic basis to get those questions answered which may be troubling to you. Also, if you're looking for more instantaneous ability to receive feedback, there will be office hours that will be established throughout the time of the online weekly uh, program. In other words, there will be nine 30-minute sessions where you can come into your online access, be able to go to the office hours, and you will see that the instructor, which is me, will be on the other side live and prepared to answer your questions. Once again, the Ask Your Instructor and the office hours are established to answer questions about the Swayzer notes or the online weekly program slides. So those two products are being serviced through that function. Now, as I mentioned, the Swayzer notes serves as the bedrock for your study program. With that, there are concept checker questions at the end of each topic that will help you determine whether you've mastered the material sufficiently in order to move forward. There's also the Swayzer Pro QBank, which is literally thousands of questions that are available that are designed to prepare you for the exam that you will probably be using uh, on a weekly basis going through the material uh, getting ready for the exam. Towards the end of your study efforts, there are practice exams. In fact, three full length or four hour exams are available for you as you hit the home stretch getting ready for the exam and an online mock exam, which will be a one full length four hour exam that's available to you as well. So a total of four full length exams are available through you uh, for you through Kaplan Swayzer's website. Now, in addition, the CAI Association offers a sample exam as well. It's available at their website at www.kaya.org. Now, if you haven't already done so, the first step in order to get ready for the level two exam is to make sure you're registered for the exam and then to then schedule your exam date and time as soon as possible through www.vue.com. Now you've been through this process for level one, so I don't assume this is gonna be a problem for you at level two. Now also remember, as you saw on the level one exam, you are required on the day of the exam to follow their ID policy, which is two valid forms of identification. Both must have a signature, one must have a photo, and a passport is preferred. 
And remember, there are only two families of calculators that are permitted as a part of the level two exam. That is the Texas Instrument BA2 Plus and the Hewlett Packard 12C calculators. So those are the only legal calculators that you can use. So don't switch calculators from what you did at level one. Finally, as we start talking about some of the things to keep in mind uh, in terms of getting closer and closer to the exam. Remember, it's gonna be important for you to make sure that you take sufficient time the day before the exam to be able to rest, uh, also hopefully get some exercise, eat well, get some good sleep and so forth. So what you wanna be doing as you hit those last couple of days is a light overview of the big picture material getting ready for the exam and not plan to do an all nighter or cram everything in at the last minute. So that will be helpful for you as you are at the top of mental agility going into the exam. On the exam day, make sure you are aware of the options that are available for you to take the exam. That exam window is available for you on the Kaya website. Make sure you get to the site early, allow time to be able to warm up your brain, make sure that you have the, all the information necessary for you in terms of ID policy, bringing your calculator and so forth. Know what you can bring into and not bring into the exam center and recognize that although it's a computer-based exam, you will be given uh, a basically a pen and pad to be able to jot down overviews, if you will, related to your essay, or if you're working a problem, the ability to do that out uh, by hand, or perhaps to be able to make notations of questions that you have thoughts about that you wanna come back uh, to be able to answer later. So that is what you're gonna see on exam day. Make sure you answer all of the questions, even if you have to guess. As you know from level one, there's no penalty for guessing. Uh, be neat and organized. And what we mean by that is on the pen and paper, make sure you number any uh, marks that you would make trying to uh, answer a particular question so you can easily come back to those and review uh, when you are getting ready to go through the final review before submitting the exam. Watch your time carefully. You will have denoted there on the computer how much time remains. You'll need to calibrate your time just like you did at level one. Stay calm and focused. You guys will have studied very well for the exam at this point. And it's a matter to reap the rewards for all the efforts that have taken place uh, leading up to the exam. Read the questions carefully. Make sure you're answering the question that's being asked. That's particularly important with the constructed response or essay questions. And follow all the directions of the proctor to make sure that you comply with the rules and regulations associated with the testing center. Now on the exam, expect the unexpected. There could be construction that will slow your progress getting to the exam center. There could be unexpected noises or excessive heat or, or coldness uh, that could occur at the exam center. So be ready for anything that could occur and also the fact that you'll feel a bit of pressure as you take the exam. Also remember that on the multiple choice questions, you'll need to find the best answer to the question. So there may be two that appear to be accurate. Well, which of the two is the most accurate? So there may be a more comprehensive alternative to what would be uh, what would appear to be two uh, answers that may both appear to be potentially correct. For the essay questions, make sure you, uh, you type your answers uh, and you type in a way that's going to be easy to follow and that is organized in terms of presentation. Phrases that clearly explain the answer are fine, so you do not have to write complete sentences. You can use what would effectively be a bullet point framework to be able to answer the questions, but it must exp express a clear thought. So organize your answer in advance. You have pen and paper available to you to be able to do so. So where do you go for help? Well, on Swayzer's website, you would go to www.swayzer.com forward slash Kaya to be able to get information related to all aspects of Swayzer products uh, that would be out there to assist you. In particular, you wanna make sure that you go to the updates errata page because any postings uh, will be out there that would be relevant for the Swayzer products or anything that would also be affected from Kaya. There is an online error reporting procedure so that if you think you found something that's an error, you can report that and that's where you will see any errors and there are very few that uh, tend to be in the Swayzer materials, but they would be posted for you 
uh, on the errata page. There's also the Ask Your Instructor tool and information on the online faculty office hours. Well, I wish you the best of luck as you start your preparation efforts for the level two exam. I'm looking forward to working with uh, those of you who will be participating in the nine week online weekly program. We will have a great time getting ready for this level two exam as you continue your progress towards achieving the Kaya designation. Good luck and I'm looking forward to working with you.